Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Ahabat Allah continuing on in our study of the ascription to or ascribing oneself to Da'wah to Salafiyya. We reach the portion of the compilation which is subtitled Ascription to Naqshbandiyya or the ascription to other than the Jama'a, meaning that there are many groups and many sects in from the past and in contemporary times which ascribe to other than Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'a, or they say they are part of Ahlul Sunnah, or they say that they are following the Salaf. But in reality, you'll find that their menhaj and methodology goes back to just a particular individual, a particular particular leader. Whereas Ahlul Sunnah, uh, the Salafiyun, those who follow the menhaj of the Salaf, their way and path goes back to the way of the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It doesn't go to Muhammad ibn the Wahhab, it doesn't go to Imam Shokani, it doesn't go to Imam uh, Sin'ani, it doesn't go to any of the, or Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, or any of the A'imma, but rather it goes to what they were united upon, which was adhering to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. So he mentions the first ascription, ascription to Naqshbandiyya. You have uh, a sect, and he says, This tariqa, or this way, ascribes itself to Muhammad Bahuddin Shah Anakshaband. The ascription for this tariqa, or this path, is from his name, and it has become known with that. He was born in the village of Bukhara. He was given the title of Naqshaband because of a print of the word Allah engraved upon the front of his heart due to a lot of remembrance of Allah. This is what they say about him. It has been said he was called Naqshaband because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam placed his noble palm on the heart of Sheikh Muhammad Bahuddin Al-Awasi uh, Naqshaband. So it became engraved on his heart. These are the stories that you'll find from Ahl Bida about their their scholars and about the way that about the people that they follow whereas Ahlul Sunnah they only ascribe that their madhab and their minhaj and their way goes back to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam even we don't say that we are uh, followers strictly of Umar bin Al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala or Abu Bakr as-Siddiq but rather, the sunnah that we are ordered to, and the only one who is infallible, that you can follow, is the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So even the fatawa of the Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala'in majma'in, we don't follow that in its absoluteness. But whether we follow that which has muwafaka, that which is in agreement with uh, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So as we said, these are the uh, many fabricated stories that you find that people make about their leaders who they follow. Like you'll find today, there's people who are, they call themselves Naqshbandi. Naqshbandi Sufi. That this is the way, their path. They don't say, instead of saying that we are Ahl Sunnah with Tiwil Jama'ah, and they do say that too. But they will say we are Naqshbandi in our tariqah, in our path. Which is falsehood and batil. Ahmed al Faruqi al Sarhindi, who died 1034 at Hijri, revived and spread the tariqa in India. So, this man who died in 717 or 791 Hijri, uh, uh, Muhammad uh, Naqshaband, he died a long time ago. I didn't even know myself that this path, this tariqa, was that old. Uh, and then the ascription to Diobandiya. Dioband is also a Sufi tariqa or Sufi path. The definition of Daru Ulum a Diobandiya according to them. This is Daru Ulum where you find a lot of, they have mudaris, uh, places to study in Canada and North America, or in America, and all over the world. And, and their asal, of course, is in Pakistan and, you know, in India and, and other places. 
and they have their schools for people to memorize the Quran, memorize uh, things from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and go through those books. But their Aqidah goes has some issues in which it goes against the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like the Ashari uh, uh, Itaqad. So Dar al-Ulum is Muslim in their religion of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah sect of a Hanafi Madhab. Drinking hole is Sufiya, Maturudiya, uh, uh, Ashariya in philosophy or their uh, Aqidah, uh, Shish, Shishtiya in methodology in their, in their Minhaj. Rather, it gathers all the different successions of groups. Waliya ilahi, Ilahiya in thought, Qasamiya in principle. Rashidiya as a subdivision, Diobandiya in ascription. So it shows you that these groups, this is from their own, uh, their own source. Their own sources, they talk about how they bring together their creed and their fiqh and their whole deen methodology from different ways. Instead of just plainly simple following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They bear witness against themselves as a jama'ah. And they bear witness that they are following what the Prophet ﷺ told us to avoid. And the Prophet ﷺ said, If tarakatil yahud ala itna wa sab'in firqa, the Jews broke into 71 sects. Wa nasara ala itna tain wa sab'in firqa wa ummati ala talatha wa sab'in firqa. And my ummah on 73 sects. Okay? So they are showing that sectarianism is actually as if this is something good, but in fact, it is something with moon. And the Prophet said, Kullaha fin nala la wada. All of them in the fire except one. And those are the ones who follow the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and the Madhab of the Salaf. Sayyid Talib al Rahman said, Adil Bandiya is a group from the Hanafis in the Indian subcontinent and other places. They follow the path of Dioband University, and their ascription is to this university. And that was to distinguish from their brothers the Brailawiya one of the sects of the Hanafis, who ascribed to a uh, to Imam of Bidah, Ahmed Rida Khan al Brailawi, who was born in the city of uh, Braili, a city in the state of Uttara Pardish in India in the year 1272 after Hijri, and died in the year 1340 after Hijri. So, and then he says, Dioband is a town in the state of Uttara Pardish, it achieved its fame due to the famous Islamic university called Dar Alum, Dar Al Alum, which was founded in 1,283 Hijri, and this university, without doubt, is regarded as a pride and honor for that town. The fundamental aim of establishing this university was to support the Hanafi Madhab and spreading it, and to subject, uh, subjugate the Prophet Sunnah, and to make the Sunnah follow the Hanafi fiqh. And there is no exaggeration in the reality of this point since even the senior scholars of Dioban have acknowledged this. SubhanAllah. So it shows that these people, instead of adhering strictly to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that which is authentic from Ahadith, that they say, no, if it doesn't go against, if it goes against our madhab, then we discard it. So this is criminal in understanding and criminal in practice in departing from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who we are ordered to follow. And Muhammad Yusuf al-Banuri, one of the leaders of the Dioband, said explaining the way of the Dioband and their madhab, the way of Dioband which their senior scholars are upon is the affirmation of the leadership of the faqih, of the ummah, the imam Abu Hanifa, with respect to his fiqh and his ijtihad, which has a lofty status in the pure sharia after the noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prophetic hadith. It is necessary to have the sciences of Sufiya and science of purification of the hearts which is transmitted by its people and it needs to be blended with the Sharia in a correct way. They acknowledge the magnificence of Ibn Taymiyyah's status but at the same time they acknowledge the greatest Sheikh Muhyiddin Ibn Arabi with his book uh, Kamilat so we have taqlid of Imam Abu Hanifa and follow the prophet, prophetic ahadith along with the sciences of Sufiya and what is made up of this blend of the three is a magnificent madhab 
which is none other than the Medhab of the sect of Diobandia. So it shows that there, even their scholars acknowledge that they are a, what we used to say uh, before we used to call it blend and win. That they are blending together different ways and trying to uh, form really a new menhaj, a new methodology for practicing and understanding Islam, taking whatever they think is good and leaving off whatever they think is bad, but in, instead of adhering strictly, this is all the difference between Salafis and the, uh, uh, trying to adhere to the madhab of the Salaf al-Saleh versus these other madhahib and other groups who uh, bring together an eclectic madhab, an eclectic minhaj, meaning they take bits and pieces from here, bits and pieces from here, and bits and pieces from here, and try to make up their own, really, in fact, understanding of Islam, Wallahu musta'an. Then you have the ascription of Jamaat al uh, the founder of Jamaat al uh, Abdullah bin Mubarak al-Qahtani said, Muhammad Ilyas al-Kandalawi is regarded as the founder of the Tabliki sect, uh, and he was the one who made the fundamental principles for the sect. Muhammad Ilyas took it to turn and acquired it from Said al-Nursi, uh, who was called Bedi al-Zaman al-Nursi, uh, who died 1379 after Hijri in Turkey. So the foundation of the ideology was from Turkey. And it grew and was, uh, you know, developed after that. And in fact, uh, Jama'at al Bleak is just a modern day Jama'a that uh, is built primarily on ignorance. And you will find amongst their group that they, those people who have a shirki uh, medhab and shirki way of ibadah, and yet they talk about making khuruj and restoring the ummah, meaning khuruj, meaning to go out and give da'wah to the Muslims. And there are many mukhalifat, but this is nor the time and the place to explore those, all of those uh, issues. Uh, Sheikh Saleh bin Fozan was asked about uh, Sufism. So Sufi is another uh, general tariqah, and this is, includes the Naqshbandi, Udiyobandi. He said, what is the ruling of ascribing to the Sufi madhab, and do we make takfir of the Sufiya? He answered, it is not allowed to ascribe to an innovated madhab of the Sufiya or other than the Sufiya. It is not allowed for the Muslim to follow the Muqtadiyah, whether from Sufiya or other than Sufiya, but rather he has to follow the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah. It is not possible for the Muslim to follow the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah, except if he learns and knows the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah and knows the madhahib of the Muqtadiyah. And this is not possible except with knowledge. Uh, as for the ignorant person, it is not possible for him to keep away from the madhahib of the Muqtadiyah because he does not know who they are. And perhaps he's, he deems them as being appropriate and thinks that they are good. Therefore, ignorance is corruption and an illness. This is why we have to seek knowledge. And even knowledge to have some basic knowledge of these different groups to know what to stay away from. But first and foremost, we concentrate our efforts on learning the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The Sufi are not all of the same grades. Uh, there are those from them who reach the level of shirk. And from them are those who are only muqtadiyah. And from them there are those ones who are... Uh, who might be a mushri, who makes dua to the dead rather than to Allah, and who seeks and aids, uh, seeks aid from graves, and who makes dua to his sheikhs, and believes that they can benefit him or harm him, and that they control the universe. So those people have fallen into shirk of Akbar, which takes them out of the fold of Islam. Wallahu musta'an. The Sufi are of different types. They are not just one type. Some of them are just Muqtadiyah. Uh, some of them are Mushrikun. Some of them are apostates. And they are the Ahlul Wahdah al Wujud, those who believe in unity of existence with the creation, that Allah and His creation are one. They're all one. This is what they believe. Those who are upon the madhab of Halaj ibn Arabi, ibn Sabain, and Tal Masani, and they are the ones who are the extremists in kufr, in disbelief. Of the people on this earth, the people of Wahdah al Wujud, those who believe in the unity of existence, meaning Allah is one with his creation. So they will say, this bookshelf is Allah. You are Allah. Uh, the dog is Allah. Uh, so, these people, there are people who believe this, this 
this ideology. They believe that Allah is everywhere or that Allah is one with his creation and all of this is falsehood and battle and these are some of the most extreme types of Sufia. Those are just some of the main points and I think we will end the treaties with that because we uh, the, the compilation as we covered the bulk of what the brother compiled the rest was just some statements about the Sufia. And so it is important for us to know and understand what it means to be from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah and that the only way we can ascribe to Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah or ascribe to Salafiyya is through ilm, through ilm, through knowledge, through Islamic knowledge, sound Islamic knowledge, which is based on the Book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the Madhab of the Salaf and that is taken, Talaqi al-ilm, and that is taken from the scholars. And this is why it's I advise myself and my brothers and sisters in Islam to at the level al-ilm seek knowledge and benefit from what you can from the scholars, especially the major scholars that are still living.